I am featured on an amazing summit called the Intrabiz Summit alongside Dr. John D. Martini, Sharon Lecter, Evan Carmichael, Rob Moore, Les Brown, Brian Tracy, 30 of the world's leading industry authorities over a three-day period, November 25th to November 27th, and it's all going to be about how to rise to thrive going into 2021. So looking forward to seeing that. It's free to join. If you want to pre-purchase some of the audio recordings, use the promo code INTRO AS10, INTRO AS10, and uh, We'll see you on the Intrabiz Summit. Take care. Bye-bye. This is the Game Changers Experience. Deep dive conversations with leading business disruptors, Olympic athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and influencers from around the world. This show will teach you insights about the winning principles in mindset, productivity, marketing, branding, entrepreneurship, business strategy, and more. Hosted by Productivity Authority, business strategist, former elite athlete, author, and public speaker, Adam Strong. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Game Changers Experience Power Up Thursdays episode I'm super pumped. I'm super energized. I hope that you've been enjoying uh, the podcast so far. Anyway, I wanted to, interestingly enough, I really wanted to talk about a subject that I think that is really not spoken about so much. And the reason for that, well, I think there's a number of reasons for that. The reasons why this podcast, this episode, this show is so important to listen to in particular, that is extremely relevant what do I mean by it's relevant? Well, most of us are working from home. Most of us are forced to create a digital business, right? So if you have a bricks and mortar business, if you have a a coaching business, if you have a services driven business, okay, uh, most of us, or some of us, I would probably say most of us in the world are probably still trying to find our feet with regards to transitioning into the digital space. And so today I really want to talk about how do you create more visibility in such a noisy world? Because most of us right now are listening to podcasts like this one, uh, are probably zoomed out, right? And uh, lots of virtual meetings going on, lots of summits going on, which is all amazing and things like that. But it all can become extremely overwhelming. And so especially if you're not kind of used to this, you know, the digital space as such, and you're used to uh, more kind of face to face connections, you know, things like that, really. But I really kind of wanted to give you a methodology. All right. And I call it the MCCP methodology. All right. Let me quickly explain what that means. All right. So I'll break down what the MCCP uh, formula is, and then I'm going to go into it a little bit more depth, and a little bit more detail. And I'll try and give you some case studies and some clients that we're working with that really kind of resonates with this. So what does the M stand for? Well, the M st- stands for is message, right? You have to create a strong and thought-provoking message, all right? You have to think about, you know, what is the message that you want to create, okay? So based on what you do in terms of, you know, your profession, your specialism, okay? What is the message that you want to essentially communicate or get across to your key target audience, right? Is it, and, and I really want you to think about this in a lot more depth and detail. This is not like surface level thing. I really want you to spend some time on this, okay? Get some pen and paper out right now, in fact, and think about what is the core message for me? What is the core message of my audience? So what is the message, right? Number two is who is it for, right? Who is the person that I'm speaking to? Who is the clientele? Who is the customer that I'm actually speaking to? What are their demographics? What are their ages? What is their big problems? Where are they based? Where are they based locally? What do they read? What do they watch? So, you know, what is the, if I'm articulating and creating a message, I need to think about, you know, about living in their shoes. Who are... It, essentially, it, most of us have a best friend, right? We know what they do, what they like, what are their values. You know, those are the basics that you know about your be- uh, your best friend. And so your target audience are is essentially people that you need to be in their world, okay? They're like your, you need to create them as if they, you know them as your best friend. 
you know everything about them, what that makes them tick, what really upsets them, what gets their back up. I suppose, what is it that they're complaining about more than anything else? <laughs> Just thinking about last week's podcast, which is really interesting. And the third one, what are the desired results? What are the results that they are seeking? What is it that that they really want in life? What is it that you can give them, okay? And I think what's, what's really important, guys, is that if you create a result for somebody or key target market, market audience, whatever it is, if you create a desired result, think about what that desired result is. Is it the fact that you're saving the money? Is it the fact that you're creating their in increasing their sales? Is it the fact that you're making their lives easier? Is it the fact that you're making them healthier? Is it the, I want you to think about what is the desired result and try to put some sort of, try to put some number on it, okay? And what I mean by that is, well, if I, for example, if I'm a sales coach, for example, I might say to myself, well, you know, I can help increase your sales by up to 25% over a nine month period. Okay, great. Well, so that's the desired outcome. If I'm a solicitor, for example, okay, what's the desired result for my clients? Is it that I'm going to guarantee that I'm going to win the case? All right. If I am, I don't know, just think about what is the, des the desired result based on your niche and your industry. What, you know, think about the results that you actually want to create for your clients. All right. Because it, again, it's not about you. It's about them right? What's in it for them? W-I-T-T-H, what's in it for them? And the fourth one, which again, is very, very much related to the previous one, which is why is it important to them? All right. Why is it that the fact that, you know, creating a digital business is important to you? Why is it that, you know, helping them to fix their problem. Why is it so important to them? What are the feelings that they're going to create? What are the emotions that they're going to create? Why is it so important to them? I really want you to answer these questions in, in, in detail. You know, again, like I said to you, go back, pause this audio straight away. Okay. If you haven't got your book and pen and paper out, okay, please do me a favor and pause this audio and make sure that you think about some of the questions that I'm asking you right now, because I can guarantee you, that when 2021 comes, okay, it's going to be a different animal, all right? 2020, for most people, has been a, a real big struggle for me, most people. And a lot of businesses have gone, I suppose they faltered, right? They, they've, gone out of, they've gone out of business, which is a real shame. It really is. However, you cannot treat 2020 the same as 2021, okay? And the only way that you can build uh, this visibility is when you create this visibility, it's going to help create more trust and understanding. You know, in our last week's episode, we talked a little bit about compassion and sharing compassion and why compassion is one of the things that I suppose I'm heard of. How, what, how do we teach compassion, right? It's the same about visibility. Uh, how do we teach visible, visibility? How do we become more visible? How do we be seen more, right? So, um, so that is the M of the formula, right? What is the next thing, which is called C? C stands for content. Now, I know that some of you may or may not think, well, hang on a second, Adam, content, right? I've heard it all before, create content, create content, create content will help grow your business, yet I'm never gonna see results, or it's gonna take years and years and years before I actually see some results. And I don't have time to create content. I don't have time to go for the long term. The reality is, ladies and gents, is that, especially if you're building a digital business, is that you have to create content. In order to create, become more visible, in order to see, be seen as a, I suppose, a, an expert authority, okay? You have to be seen as creating content, all right? Now, what is the, uh, think about what the content that you wanna create, okay? One of the best things that I get, uh, I teach a lot of my clients to do is think about what your specialism is, right? So say if your specialism is intellectual property, yeah? And uh, you're a lawyer and you're a patent attorney or whatever it might be, okay? List down all of the key problems that your clients or your customers are facing, right? And then turn it into a, a, either an article, a podcast, a video, something that is gonna help educate us, help is gonna help our lives feel easier, right? Because if I listen to your tips and advice or strategies or whatever it might be, okay, whatever it is that you're offering to me, I know for a fact that over a period of time, as my trust builds up towards you, I'm now going to then reach out to you and may, maybe purchase something because I believe that you can really help me 
cure my pain, that you can fix my pain, right? So, so that's content, you know, content in terms of articles, is it podcast videos, as I mentioned, what platforms are you using? So uh, based on your target market, right? And adapt, adapting to, according to your target market. So if you're targeting professionals, then you're probably going to go on LinkedIn, right? And uh, there's some great, there's some great strategies. There's, there's some great tactics that you can use on LinkedIn. There's LinkedIn Live, there's, there's LinkedIn Posts, for example, use the relevant hashtags. It's contribution, contribution towards people's posts and, and things like that. Making comments, sharing likes, loves, all that kind of thing. I think it's really, really important as well to replicate, you know, if you want to be become more visible, then you can also piggyback off of other people that are also creating content and add value, add your opinions to what is it, whatever the content is that you're, uh, you know, reading or watching or listening to. Uh, I think that really, that, that really opens up a window of opportunity more than anything else. And then the third thing, which I want you to think about is how is it that you are repurposing your content? So for example, if you have a podcast, right? Um, are you turning that into articles? Are you turning that into a YouTube video? Are you taking little snippets and turning it into a uh, infographic, for example? So there are different ways in which we can repurpose content and then essentially using the relevant hashtags and essentially recycling that content. You can take one piece of content and turn it into four, five, if not 10 pieces of different content shared on different platforms because people are going to see it at different times. And also... We all taking content in different forms, whether it be we read stuff, whether we watch stuff, whether it be listening to stuff, or we like to do stuff. It just depends, you know, is it that we uh, like, love to engage in polls or that we'd love to, you know, create quizzes or whatever it is, okay? What is it, how is it that you're repurposing your content? And um, interestingly enough, I was actually working with a client last year and he was really struggling, like, it, it was so experienced in what he did and was giving huge amounts of value. The big problem for him was that he was charging per hour, right? He was charging per hour. So charge trading time for pounds. That's what he was doing. And he was competing in, there was, there are two games that you compete in What he was competing in the pricing game, right? Who can be the cheapest? Okay. And, and the thing is, is that if you want to go down that road, then you know there's plenty of other people also competing in the price range okay who can be the cheapest right who can offer uh, the cheapest game like ryanair fares or a, you know or easyjet or whatever it is and guess what that there, there's no problem in competing in the price game provided that you have this unique selling proposition or or alternatively you can compete on value and by creating content you're creating value you're seeing you can be seen as actually increase. You can actually increase your prices. You can actually charge more than your competitors if you're creating content, because again, you're seen as an expert authority. So I want you to really think about that. The third C is all around consistency. So one of the big things that I find with a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners, the reason why they fail at building visibility over a consistent period is because they're not consistent enough in the way that they actually deliver and create content. And what I mean by that is, for example, in this podcast, we have our Power Up Thursdays every Thursdays without, without any excuses. Every Tuesday, we bring out our uh, weekly episodes. We're going to be bringing out our Game Changers Next Level Club show as well, which will be done on a weekly basis. So we're always creating content, content, more and more content. But I'm consistent. We are consistent as a team. We know the deadlines. We know exactly when, when we've got to publish that pop content and how we actually get it out there. Because the more content that you're out, the more visible that you are and you're seen as an expert. Again, it increases your credibility and it positions you as that authority. So that's really, really important is can be consistent in what you do. All right. And uh, if you if you're not consistent, then you're not going to get the results that you desire. Okay. That's my point of view. And the last one, which I think, which is probably one of the most important parts of being more visible is the P. What does P stand for? P stands for personal. Make it personal. What do I mean by make it personal? Well, create content based on, again, adapting to the needs of 
your key target clients or your key customers or whatever it might be and articulating and adapting that content personal according to that person you know by sharing by tagging certain individuals that you feel can extra that, that can add value will build up conversations so so important you know and again this is just a small snippet about how you can create visibility there are so many other ways to create visibility so as an example i mentioned about being consistent on one particular social media platform so if you are targeting professionals as an example you need to be consistently on linkedin making comments on on uh, other people's posts liking uh, putting up your own content for example are you creating quotes so um it's all about consistency right and how you are seen. Uh, the other thing I mentioned as well is, is I mentioned around polls as well. So creating a poll or a competition, creating quizzes. There are some different ways in which you can do that. So LinkedIn, for example, have a create a poll section on uh, Facebook. You can also do that as well. I think there's like a maximum of four different options. So you put a question, four different options. And again, it's a great way to build rapport uh, with people, right? It's a great way to build rapport but also it's a great way to take that particular piece of research or, or whatever it is that you're trying to seek out the answers to create these conversations and turn it again into content. It's just a great way to do so. So I really want you to think about the MCCP formula, okay? And how do you, how exactly then you take the formula mm -hmm. to be able to put into your own business that each and every single one of you guys, right? is all on a different journey. You're all got different businesses. You are all in a different, uh, you're all in a different place in a different position. I don't care if you're a start business or you're an experienced business owner. Okay. We live in the arena of the digital world and you have to become more visible because otherwise if you're not visible, then guess what? You're a nobody and no one does business with a nobody. That's the reality. And I'm sorry to say that, but that is the way things are. Uh, if you want to be and, and here's the reality as well. There's so much going on the, on the online space right now. There's so much going on in, on the digital world. So the more that you get yourself out there, the more that you'll be seen. It's a bit like a, a billboard or an, a, or an advertisement board, okay? The more times that you drive past a billboard uh, with a particular advert, right? Say, for example, I don't know, you saw an advert and it, and it, and it, and it said... Um, uh, We'll wash your, it's a window cleaning business, right? And we'll do your roof and terraces and things like that, right? You go past the first one, you don't see it. Second one, third one, fourth one, you probably don't see it. And it isn't until the fifth billboard that you really start taking some notice, right? And again, it, this is why it's so important to create this consistency because the more that you put content out there, the more that you're going to be able to be seen as that area of expert, uh, that, that expert that has this bond, this intri intricacy bond with you and your clients or your customers. Uh, otherwise, there's just simply no trust. We need to build trust our clients and our customers because if there's no trust, they don't buy. It's very, very simple. The other thing as well, and again, this is really, really, uh, I just had a thought process, actually, more of an epiphany, actually. But actually, one of the other ways, and, and I was actually listening to this via uh, coaches and mentors that uh, taught me a, a few years back. And again, they were in the window cleaning, roof cleaning business or whatever it is. And in, a, in the United States, they have these, um, I suppose, rather than having kind of like a simple billboard, with, we're working on this property to do windows or whatever it is, right? There was this very controversial uh, advert. And I'm just trying to think what this controversial advert was. It really got a lot of the neighbors, I suppose, talking about this particular company because it was so controversial. And I'm just trying to think what this particular, uh, this billboard or this kind of advert outside of someone's house was. I think it was something like, because it was a roof cleaning business and a, and a window cleaning business, a lot of the customers that were they were working with had like these million million dollar stately homes you know they have like these million dollar properties and no one likes to have like i suppose dirty windows right they don't like to have these dirty windows as such they need they want to be able to have they want to be able to have these clean windows you know and it's nothing worse than having your neighbors talk about how how badly your windows look like so the billboard of the advertisement was 
was a picture of it was like a dirty house like a shanty house type thing and it said something like oh do you want your house looking like this or do you want your house looking like this and people were like i don't want my house looking like that right and so it really kind of got people to really think about you know really got people to really think about you know their appearance and their stately home and their and their mansions and stuff like that and 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 honestly the, the guy got so much business from this it was crazy so it's fantastic um so how is it that you can become more visible in your industry in your niche in your realm as such so um listen guys i hope that today has been of use do me a favor if you've got some great results or you're getting some epiphanies from some of our power up thursdays do me a favor reach out to me i'm on social media use the click on the links on the links below be great to connect with you guys but more importantly if you listen to these podcasts on a regular basis and you listen to it on Apple in particular, please do me a favor, leave a review, whether it be a one star or a five star review. I don't really care. It depends on what, whatever you feel gives you a value. And just write a comment in the comment section about how you feel this podcast is helping you in your business and helping you to, I suppose, more about this podcast is all around, I suppose, shifting or disrupting some of the, the mind thoughts that you may have on a daily basis. And just to give you a different perspective more than anything else. So listen, hope you've enjoyed today's Power Up Thursdays episodes. We'll see you again on the next show. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, you guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening in to this episode of the Game Changers Experience. I hope that you got some amazing value, some great insights and golden nuggets that you can implement into your business straight away. I would really, really appreciate it if you could leave a five-star review on the button below. Have a fantastic day, and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.